So therefore, Islamic Sharia, when we talk about Islamic Sharia, these philosophical principles, wherever they are implemented, they will bring the fruits. Now, you don't have to have one kind of consultation. These are the generic principles the Quran gives you. Now, you can determine how to implement it according to the situation you are in, the context in which you have to apply, and to the best of your ability. It is just like you are given a skeleton. For instance, this is ISM. You have to live within this building. But within this building, you have got the option to go to this office or upstairs office, masjid or Islam school or anywhere. But what? Remain within the boundary. So remain within the boundary of equality, consultation. Now you choose the way you want to. But remember one thing, if there is fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if there is clear cut consciousness of being responsible on the day of judgment, even when a person is making a mistake, pretty soon that person will what? Undo what he or she is doing and come back and there will be barakah in even that implementation. Now, this whole concept of democracy, some of the Muslims, they will say it is haram. Actually, I received even yesterday a call from one of the Islamic communities where people are fighting whether voting or selection. Because they were feeling that actually election is also selection. <coughs> Some people get together. They want to what? Human beings. So why not we just go basically Ahlul Halli wal Aqad as Sahaba did that they nominated somebody and he is a Khalifa. So we nominate the Amir and the Shura. But again, remember one thing, that democracy in its essence is not against wa amruhum, Shura. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say that the Shura means only this way as Sayyidina Abu Bakr did. I mean, look at the type of Shura Sayyidina Abu Bakr did. He appointed Sayyidina Umar. He basically selected and then asked everybody to vote for him because he felt that he is the most appropriate person and actually Abdurrahman bin Auf was just stunned the way Sayyidina Abu Bakr dealt with this issue. Sayyidina Abu Bakr is on his deathbed and Sayyidina Abdurrahman bin Auf goes to him and says, Abu Bakr, do you know where you are going? He said, I know, I am going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says, do you know you have got nothing left in the dunya right now because you are breathing your last? He said, yes. He said, do you know, what will be your answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for appointing Omar? This is a guy who is so harsh. He has got the stick in his hand and does not forgive anybody. Do you think that, you know, if you have got a guy, a shepherd, who has got the stick in his hand, is beating the, the sheep, the sheep are going to be dispersed. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr ta'ala says, this is exactly going to be my answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, from my conscience, from my dummy, I felt that at this stage of the Ummah, Umar is the best for the circumstances they are in. Because his judgment is not based. Imagine, Sidra Abdul Rahman bin Auf and Sidra Abu Bakr are close friends, business people. But their thinking is at this time, one is thinking about one aspect and the other is thinking about what? Both of them are what? Following Shura. Both of them are following justice. Both of them are the utmost people of taqwa. But one's perspective is different than the others. And history is what a witness that Sayyidina Abu Bakr Allah's perspective proved to be right. So what I'm saying is, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, puts the principle, shura, put the shura, he could have said, do this way. Have election. Just have only people who are righteous or learned select. Don't give it to the common people. He just left it open. And that's what is the vitality of Islamic Sharia because it gives you generic principles and it leaves the implementation to your best judgment while keeping your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your moral obligation and your sense of accountability 
on the day of judgment. So now, look at the example. Prophet Muhammad Sallam, he has got a different model. Even people go to him, Sayyidina Abbas, his uncle. His son-in-law, Sayyidina Ali, goes to him. Ya Rasulullah Sallam, you are about to die, assign somebody. His model paradigm for Amr Um Shura is different than the model of Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Sayyidina Omar about to die, he assigned six people. You say, you choose. And if you disagree, get my son Abdullah, be part of it. And he puts the restriction that one of the condition is that my son can never be Khalifa. And then he addresses his son and says, if it comes to tie, then vote on the side of Abdul Rahman bin Auf because he is businessman. And at this stage of the Muslim community, we need more like because our empire has grown and we need business mentality people now in control. He is putting restrictions, but he is not saying this is the way you have to do it. The model of Sayyidina Usman, Sayyidina Ali is different. But all of them come under the Amruhum. Shura Bainum. Now, from Islamic perspective, if the modern Western democracy is satisfying this concept that people are satisfied with the proper election, they are crystal clear, there will be nothing wrong because it is an extension of what? Making the decision based upon mutual consultation. So therefore, I can tell you, Yes, in addition to it being from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having that comprehensive nature, it's the biggest, and I would say the most distinctive feature of Islamic Sharia is it can be implemented in any setting, in any kind of context, over any kind of community and people, and whosoever applies Sharia principles, whether knowingly or not knowingly, is going to be benefiting from it and warding off some of the what harms and the other things. So therefore, this concept of having generic principles and detailed principles is the source of the continuity, consistency, as well as the vitality of Islamic Sharia. Islam has fixed when it comes to the issues of aqidah. You cannot change it. When it comes to ibadat, it has fixed it. When it comes to morality, it has fixed it. So these are fixed things, you cannot change it. But when it comes to human interactions, human mu'amalat, the Quran has given most of the time the generic principles and implementation, the Quran has given us a lot of flexibility, a lot of choices. And that's the reason whether somebody was born in Russia or they were living in Bukhara or they were Persian who have spent all of their life, you know, in something different or in India where the worship of so many gods were there. When Islamic Sharia came, everybody felt this is it. If the leadership is in Turkish hand, or in Umayyad hand, or Abbasid hand, or in Egypt, everybody can apply the same Sharia and benefit from it as much as they do it. Because when it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows your secrets, He is closer to us than our hearts, He knows how human beings work, which things work with human beings, what type of psychology is helpful? So when he has prescribed those things, they are really in accordance with nature. I'm just going to give you an example. We're talking about the solution of nature.